All right, so hi, I'm Morris Rosenthal for Phoner Books, and we're looking at the motherboard CPU and RAM failure flowchart from my book, Computer Repair with Diagnostic Flowcharts. And the CPU and the RAM are included on the motherboard failure flowchart because you really can't diagnose them separately unless you're talking about simply swapping the CPU or the RAM into a known good working system to test them. And the reason is all of their power is derived directly from the motherboard. All of their connections are directly to the motherboard. There aren't any intermittent cables or other things that can really go wrong other than the heat sink having failed on the, on the CPU. And we do talk about that on this flowchart. So we start right off with the most basic step. Are you getting a live screen or not? And if you aren't, if you aren't getting a live screen, Pretty soon we ask, are you doing the power diagnostic? And if not, we kick you out to the power supply failure flowchart. A little further on, if your video diagnostic isn't done, we send you to the video failure diagnostic flowchart. If it turns out to be a problem coming up here if you have a live screen, but you're freezing on boot, that's something we'd refer to the motherboard performance flowchart. Of all the flowcharts in this book, I think this is the one that has the most transfer points, sending you to another flowchart because the problem, even if it might be with the motherboard CPU or RAM in the end, it's better to start at these other points and eliminate the more obvious possibilities. Now, as you get into actually troubleshooting the motherboard, because the components, the CPU and the RAM, are socketed, it's pretty common to have problems where the, the simply the socket loosens up a little or it oxidizes with age, and just reseating the component might fix the problem. And this chart takes you through that in a logical manner. I don't recommend you start out there and just do it. Um, you might find out, particularly if you got the computer from somebody else who did an upgrade or if it was built by somebody um, who wasn't very reputable, it might have the wrong RAM installed for the motherboard and operate but not operate well. Uh, there are some very definitive problems that motherboards can tell you about, generally through beep codes. And we talk a little about beep codes and tell you how to find out where those beep codes are listed for a particular motherboard. But those have gotten less common and less useful, in fact, as motherboards have been more and more integrated with chipsets so that there really aren't that many discrete components on a motherboard you can fix. I mean, even if you're a good board level technician, Generally speaking, about the only thing on a motherboard you can repair is if you have capacitors that fail, which isn't that uncommon, and they can be replaced. I mean, you might see a fuse failure, but that's, that's really about it. Um, as we go through motherboard diagnostics, if you're comfortable with what you're doing, uh, you, you get to the point where if you're having these strange ghosty problems, really the main test is to take the motherboard out of the case and just run it on the bench with the power supply and with, with the video card. And it's the sort of thing that, you know, I don't advise you do unless you're very comfortable working around electricity, etc. Because you could burn the house down, for example, or you could give yourself a nasty zap. So some of these things are, are really getting into technician level sort of stuff. And, and the book is, in fact, used by some colleges where they teach uh, technical skills or have technician courses. And I'm sure the kids enjoy it because it's only $14.95 compared to a $200 textbook. But if you're looking at all these things, and you're saying, I'm not expert enough. I don't know what you mean by hear beeps, you know, default motherboard settings. What's that supposed to mean? What this book does is, as you read through the chapter or skip forward in the chapter, we repeat the symbols in the margins. And then you get a text explanation of what we mean. You know, power diagnostic done. Does the system power up? Do you hear any beeps, drive spinning up, fan, etc.? If the power isn't coming on, proceed to power supply failure. And they have these short descriptions for what are very short problems. And there are longer descriptions for when you get into problems that we think require some explanation, like the different types of, of CPU sockets you're going to run into, which is listed alongside CPU seated flat. And you might see here, just below that, this link to a page on the website, which might even be the illustrated page where you're seeing this flowchart from, since I'm going to embed it there. But the point is, anyway, the, this flowchart and the accompanying performance flowchart are both available in draft form on the phonerbooks.com website, as are a number of illustrated procedures for motherboard removal, installation, etc. But 
If you're not comfortable working with computers, if it's really your first time, you should try using Google to find an exact description of your exact system if you get to the point, point that you feel you need to take it apart and replace something. And hopefully the troubleshooting flowcharts lead you away from, from uh, having to replace something and you find it something else. So I hope you enjoy the computer repair with diagnostic flowcharts or check out the draft flowcharts on the phonerbooks.com website.